I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Spring, 1320. A road-worn traveler unfamiliar with the area through which he passes stops to water his horse. Locals have told him stories they say to stay clear of the castle by the river, but it seems pleasant enough, and he's just passing through anyway. He hears a rustle. He turns, and bounding towards him is a creature faster than any man, wielding a pike. It's over in an instant. The creature dips its hat in the traveler's blood and heads back to the castle. I'm Brandon Boyer. And I'm John Dunham. And welcome to This Mythical Life, the podcast where each episode, one person reports their findings on a mythical topic, and the other makes it interesting. Today we're talking about a creature of which the bulk of reports come from the 1300s, and there are very few modern sightings. I get that that the bit is, you know, we start by saying, like, you know, oh, we're, we're a parody of some other podcast, but how is anyone going to know that we're actually Cryptopedia? This is the first episode. Anyways... So, this is definitely a uh, a red cap, right? That's what this is. Hold up, you just dis- hold up. There's a script. There's a script, there's a, John. Okay, if there's a there's a script, but you just describe like there's like three things it could be. It's it's humanoid in appearance. It's located on the Anglo-Scottish border. Any guesses on what it could be? Not a red cap. Wrong. It's a red cap. <laughs> you fool. <laughs> You got me. You got me good. I got you good. So the the red cap is a bogan, goblin, hobgoblin, or gnome in Scottish folklore, described by William Henderson in his hit book from 1879, Notes of Folklore of the Northern Countries of England and the Borders. That's a pretty good title, I gotta say. It rolls right off the tongue. He describes it as a short, thickest old man with long, prominent teeth skinny fingers armed with talons like eagles, large eyes of a fiery red color, gristly hair streaming down his shoulders, iron boots, and a pike staff in his left hand with a red cap on his head. So was it just like a dwarf that was angry at people for, like, making fun of him for being short? What's... It's entirely possible he might have been hitting the ale. I mean, maybe he had, like, those, you know, like, like those, those, uh, hot topic... (laughs) <laughs> um, like, at, like, those, those, uh, the long those rings. claws. The long rings. He was really into the cure before they were popular. These creatures are also known to smash travelers with rocks while they sleep. So, super friendly. And in addition, Ol Hendy says that, uh, about their weaknesses, that this ill-conditioned goblin, however, may be driven away by repeating scripture words or holding up a cross. He will then yell dismally or vanish in a flame of fire, leaving behind him a large tooth on the spot where he was last seen. So, we're still talking about gods, I feel like. Yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> like, like I, I feel like my, my initial hypothesis, my initial uh, explanation for the misidentification might hold hold some water, actually, it turns out. Oh yeah, they're just said dwarves. Uh, and they, they, they cover up their, their sorrow with murder. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that that's true, because it's said that if their hat ever dries out, they'll die. So they have to keep their hat wet with blood. Blood doesn't take that long to dry. No, they're just murder machines. Were there that many people dying in, what was it, the 1600s? The, the book was written in 1879, but the, most accounts happened in the 1300s. And there's a lot of death. Lots of death in the 1300s. I, well, I know there's a lot of death, but that seems like an inordinate amount. And I mean, like... The Black Plague and all that good stuff is already doing its job, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So <laughs> there's less people, and yet somehow they're killing enough that you know. Let's 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 think this through, right? So it's a it's a it's a fairly decent sized cat, right? Like I'd say it's probably about what would you say six inches to a foot? 
I'd say proportional to a cap on a garden gnome to the rest of the garden gnome's body. So, like, we'll say six inches, right? Yeah. So, six inch cloth cloth cap. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna hold a lot of uh, juices, so to speak, <laughs> right? Like, I don't know how fast blood dries, which is something I take pride in. Um, but let's let's just consider for a second that this bloody hat. This this bloody hat is going to take, you know, maybe two hours tops. Do they have to kill someone every two hours to survive? I think they do. Now, as far as how long it takes blood to dry, apparently as a rule of thumb, wiping a, a typical small blood droplet will not lead to a macroscopically visible smear after a period of time of approximately 60 minutes. Um, so an hour. Yeah, an hour. So, so they have an hour between kills. Yeah. That's that's 24 kills a day. Very stressful to be a red cat. It would be very... St- I, I mean, I get why they murder. I get why they murder. It's It makes total sense. They're just mad. They're they're very gothy, like you say, because they, they reside in spots that were once the scene of tyranny, such as border castles, towers, and peel houses. So super, super gothy. Um, they have nail polish. It's black, but their hat is red. That's how they work. So what's a peel house? Because I've never heard of that before in my life. A uh, a peel house is um, it's a medieval thing. Okay, that's that was something I assumed. Context clues told me that it's a medieval thing. What I was wondering is, what is a peel house? <laughs> it's a uh, it's a building from uh, the 1300s, John. You didn't know that? Apparently, well. <laughs> I- <laughs> I, I don't even know why I try sometimes. So we'll we'll focus on one red cap in particular. This one is known as Robin the Red Cap. Robin is said to be the familiar of William de Solis, who inherited Hermitage Castle in 1318 from his father, Nicholas de Solis, who first built the castle 78 years earlier in 1240. So how do you get a red cap familiar? Oh, We'll go into this. Okay. We will, that... There's deals and there's devils and there's magical boxes. It's fantastic. I want a magical box. They, not this magical box. This one, this one sucks. After William was in control of Hermitage Castle, it said that children would disappear. They'd be kept locked in dungeons until they could be used for his ritualistic slaughter. He used local peasants as two-legged oxen boring holes into their shoulders so he could fasten carts to them and make them drag him around his his land. There's no way that this actually happened, right? Because, like, that's that's horrifying. Oh, it's horrible. I'm not saying it was great times or he was a good guy. These are from... So, so Will, Will Henderson here, he, uh, in, his, in, his, in his manuscript, also referenced other documentation from the 1800s, including letters that were personally written to him. This portion isn't necessarily true, but he does have supporting um, documents that he references. Oh, wow. Well, that's a nightmare. Yeah, this guy's kind of a dick. Yeah, that's, 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 not, that's, that's not good. Yeah. So one story uh, from a local said that after kidnapping a young girl and killing her father, a mob formed around his castle. Alexander Armstrong talked the crowd down, and later William invited him over for dinner. Alexander probably thought it was a thanks for helping me out. DeSolis was pretty pissed off that someone else showed power over a crowd, so he just came in and then got just stabbed to death. Just instantly stabbed to death. Uh, this DeSolis guy does not sound entirely stable to me. Nope, so Tierney, Bloodshed, check that off the list. All the red cap, all the stuff red cap's like. I, I feel like he's just a red cap. And pretty, he's pretty bad. Like, did he have, did he have, like, a uh, black eyeliner? That That's the dead giveaway. He was David Bowie from Labyrinth. Hmm, okay, I see. Stealing all the children. Oh, well, yeah, he was actually stealing yeah, all the children. Yeah, he was totally <laughs> stealing all the children. The, uh, the local legend submits that William practiced dark magic, and in one of his rituals, he had made a deal with the devil and received a red cap familiar in return, which he could summon by tapping three times on an iron chest. The creature would grant him inhuman strength and make him invulnerable to swords and hanging. Henderson wrote that near now we plainly have the red cap sly who sat in Hermitage Castle with evil Lord Solus, 
sorcerer, and tyrant alike. The warden of the southwest marshes, and to him, the red cap said, What thou shalt bear a charmed life, and hold that life of me, against lance and arrow, sword and knife, I shall thy warrant be, nor forged steel, nor hempen bound, shall ever thy limbs confine, till threefold ropes of sifted sand around thy body twine. So this guy's he he summons his his evil elf and then it gives him strength and he's 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 inhumanly he's great he's superman. Uh um, So like if he fell off a cliff would he die? Inhumanly strong. So so maybe not. It depends. Cuz I mean I mean like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Yeah. If he fell from a high height, he'd still die. He'd still get hurt. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime, right? Arnie didn't have a little demon elf granting him superpowers. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> Except no for Brothers. The movie Brothers is a different story. Outside of the filming. <laughs> he literally had a little demon elf giving him superpowers. Yeah. And not only that, but uh, what was the what was the one where he got pregnant? Mr. Mom? Yeah, Mr. Mom. Yeah. Also had a demon elf giving him superpowers. True. I feel like. Very way. true. Um, so I like he definitely had a demon elf giving him superpowers periodically. That's a thing, I assume. Yeah, totally. Wait, is Danny DeVito a red cap? Danny DeVito, you know, he wears a lot of makeup, but in Batman Returns, that's the one time he was filmed without any makeup. So assuming that a red cap is a real thing, right? Okay, bad which... assumption, but go on. <laughs> it is a terrible assumption. It's a terrible assumption. And they, they stay alive by keeping their, their hat soaked in blood, right? Yep. What if a red cap was like, wait a second. What if I just jam this up in someone? Oh, that's a good idea. Like, what if I just jam this up in someone? I kept them alive. Then I get, like, a free, you know, 50, 60 years of yeah. just, like, I would do that if I was a red cap. The act of dipping the hat in the blood means they don't need to have it on their head. It just has to be wet with blood. If I ever was given a deal, right, yep. and the deal was, hey, you're allowed to live as long as this hat is wet with blood. I would be like, what do you mean? What kind of blood? Because that's important, too, right? Yeah. Could they kill a deer and just take deer blood? What about a blue whale? I mean, you could just <laughs> jam your you could just jam your hat right into a blue whale's whale's veins right i guess i guess those famous scottish whales i mean it's close to whales it's god damn it so william de solis was invincible for all intents and purposes the only catch after brokering this deal is that he could never look at his red cap familiar and that um that tying him in three ropes of sand could could bind him so if someone could figure that out they could successfully constrain him does the rope have to be exclusively made of sand could glass rope be used because i mean glass is just like you know melted sand yeah so you're not far off so apparently william de solis's curiosity got the best of him or he accidentally caught robin out the corner of his eye because the next day a mob of townsfolk by the order of then king of scotland robert the bruce wrapped him in a chain filled with sand so they used a hollow chain and filled that with sand and then they took him to Nine Stain Rig. One account apparently says that on a circle of stones, they placed the pot on a circle of stones, but barely nine. They heated it red and fiery hot and burnished black brass did glimmer and shine. They rolled him in a sheet of lead and a sheet of lead for the funeral pall. They plunged him into the cauldron red and melted him body, lead, bones and all. So yeah. Chain of sand and then just brutally murdered. <laughs> yeah. Melted in a pot of lead. So the bigger problem that I have, how did the townsfolk know that his one weakness was a chain of sand? Right? That that seems like a pretty uh, easy thing to keep under wraps. He might have gotten cocky. I don't know. N nothing's said about him being braggadocious. But he might have just been like, y'all fucks can't kill me. I'm invincible. Except if you have a rope of sand, good luck figuring that shit out. Even if I was braggadocious, I would just be, you just can't kill me. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, they don't, you don't need to know that a rope of sand will kill me. Right? That's some, like, Macbeth-level uh, 
layers of not caring. But then again, Macbeth is the Scottish play. So that's maybe true. it's like, so is this like a problem that Scottish people have <laughs> where they've got a weakness? They're totally immortal. True. But there's this one weird impossible thing that prevents me from being truly immortal. Uh-huh. Right? So like Macbeth, it was the, the trees would come to meet him or whatever. The forest would come to meet him. Yeah. Is this just a thing? Like, I wonder if it's like, do the Scots have a propensity for irony? Because it seems like it's it seems like they like irony when it comes to immortal people. I mean, is is Superman Scottish? It's you know it's a fact that all Scots are immortal and only have one weakness. So it, that's just a biological fact. So so all Scots are Superman. Yes, not all of them can fly, but they're all Superman. How many can fly on average? About this a third. Important. A third of the population. That's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Like 27.333%, so almost a third. 23 and me is actually trying to figure this out. <laughs> the uh, So yeah, if you're more than half Scottish, do a 23 and me. Find out what your one weakness is. Other than that, you're good to go. It's a genetic predisposition to a weakness. Correct, yeah. So then, then in that case, did he really make a deal with the devil? All Scots have a direct line to the devil. This is fact. I feel like we're 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 stepping uh, into a dangerous territory by declaring this to be fact. Oh, do you hear that? Oh, do you hear yeah. that sound? We're receiving a secret message via shortwave radio. We'll be right back. Our sponsor this week is Calcigon. If at-home butchery is your hobby like me, then you know that the hardest part about cleanup is what to do with all those bones. That's why I use Calcigon. Simply place the bones into a large, non-aluminum container, fill the container with Calcigon until it just covers the remains, and in just three hours, it can reduce a bone as large as a femur to the point where the largest part is no larger than a gumball. After just five hours, it will completely reduce the remains until the largest particle is no larger than a grain of sand. And the best part is that the remaining solution can just be poured down your drain. No need to worry about your nosy neighbors spotting you, and no need to worry about clogs. That's Calcigon for all your home butchery needs. Now back to the show. God damn it. <laughs> I saw your uh, your little, you know, oh, kitty. Yeah, there's a kitty. She's good. She's helping. She's keeping me on track. She's holding her paw. As I read, she keeps pointing at the letter. That's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, uh, have you considered the notion that your cat may be an undiscovered species of some kind? A cryptid, if you will? I am pretty Which, sure she is. She's she's um half chupacabra, half Floridian. Floridian? Yeah. Uh, so Floridians are cryptid. Uh, no, chupacabras are, but they have a procliv- proclivity for the uh, Florida folk. You've just painted a horrifying picture. Welcome to my America, John. I can I leave or am I trapped? There's a wall. There's a, I'm tra- okay. I'm trapped. Okay. We've reached uh at, at time of record while we're recording this. We're about you know eh, half an hour in roughly. Yeah. Oh no, recording. we're like we're like most of the way through. I'm just gonna do what the actual story is. Well, well, well no, no, no. I want to point out our inaugural episode of a show about cryptozoology. Uh huh. Mind you. I mean, our, our main thing isn't we, we do more than just cryptids. Yeah, we do more things than just cryptozoology. We do a little bit of, you know, paranormal events, urban legends, things along those lines. Yeah. 30 minutes into our first show is the first time we mention the word cryptid. Oh, they'll figure it out. I mean, yeah, they'll figure it out if they're watch if they're listening to this. They, they probably are have some passing interest in cryptids. Yeah, or maybe they thought this was like a cryptocurrency podcast, um, and they're trying to get rich off of uh, Bitcoin. Which, if you're trying to get rich off of Bitcoin, let let me give you let me make a, a micro podcast within uh, within Cryptopedia. <laughs> uh-huh. um, it's too late, and that's the end of the series. So none of that actually happened, and it was all false. Wait, wait, what? Yeah, none of that happened. That's but uh, 1300s folk uh, great at spreading rumors. But you told me that that all happened. No, I told you it all, all was in a book. But if it gets put in a book, that means it happened. Right? Yes. So all of that was in a book, but never happened. 
Uh, so so the real history um because this was all they were all real folk it was all these are just rumors that that uh locals spread about them because they're douchebags but the real story is that shortly after taking hermitage castle william conspired to take the crown from king robert bruce with uh, a couple other folks sir patrick de graham david de brechen uh, and the king's nephew can i hear that uh can i hear that de brechen again Debrechen, you gotta roll your K, it's Scottish. Uh, and he wanted to give it to himself um, as a descendant of the daughter of Alexander II. And Solus actually died not being boiled in a pot of molten lead, but he starved to death as a prisoner in Edinburgh Castle. You know what's fun about being starved to death? I just I just found out about this. What is it? Um, you're, once, once you reach a certain point, you start to... Uh... Uh, metabolize your liver oh yeah which which generates uh acetone uh-huh um so when he was dying his breath definitely smelt like a uh, nail polish remover ah uh, true that sounds like a night I, I hate the smell of nail polish remover by the way yeah um i would rather die almost any other way than my last moments be smelling acetone would you take being boiled in a pot of lead that's quick um let's see okay so two other really short tales about red caps the first one is from uh it's a letter from mr surtees to william scott recounting a tale from elizabeth cockburn about something that happened near her property um from what i could find this supposedly happened the year before 1745 um in which there was a rebellion in scotland where two young gents from newcastle uh showed up and uh, in short, they're near a moors near a river and bent down to drink. And when they raised their heads, they saw, quote, the brown man of moors, a dwarf very strong and stoutly built, his dress brown like a weathered bracken and his head covered with frizzled red hair, his countenance ferocious and his eyes glowing like those of a bull. Um, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. I'm going to stop you right there. You didn't know about the Scottish bulls? Their eyes glow? Yeah, all Scottish uh, bulls, their eyes glow. I feel like we're making a lot of blanket statements about Scotland, and they're not going to be happy with us. It makes it easier to farm at night. So it's like headlights. Yeah, exactly. Um, I also found a mention in The Lore of Scotland, which is um, a guide to Scottish legends by Sir Terry Pratchett, who is kind enough to be the first to review his own book. So good on you, Terry. Oh, you reviewed his own book. Well, I, I I do love Terry Pratchett. Now I noticed you have a physical copy of that book. Could you uh could you pop that that bad boy up in the camera so I can take a look? Okay, yeah. No, that's that's pretty nice. Yeah, that's a thick book. It's it's rather thick. And uh, just for fun, Sir Terry Pratchett comments on his own work. Um, within a few minutes of this book arriving, so he ordered his own book. Um, I had put I bookmarks it. in five pages and was roaring through the index. A lovely compilation. It's the real macabre. So there's definitely people who read that and didn't realize that it was Terry Pratchett who wrote a review of his own book, right? Yeah. Oh, I think that's that's the completely the reason why he would have done that. Like, it's definitely what happened. Yeah. Mr. Pratchett found a story. He also cites a lot of his um, his sources. So he found a story somewhere that describes a youth who falls asleep and in his slumber or red cap steals his brains for years this kid is insane until the virgin mary restores his brains and his um uh, sanity there's a lot to unpack in that was it a metaphoric brain or was it his literal like gray matter that was stolen first of all no so, so this st- is extremely short and that that's more or less verbatim the whole thing uh, wow! Young kid falls asleep, and in his slumber, a red cap steals his brains. They didn't say red cap; they called it something else. But it's a red cap. And yeah. for years, the kid is insane until the Virgin Mary restores his brain to their station. Um, so the most recent account I could find, um, it wasn't first hand, and it was from a church's newsletter. Uh, don't ask how I found this, but the newsletter was issued in the summer of 2016, and towards the end of this church newsletter. Um, there's a section about the passing of Sister Wendy Rennett, who was born on the 13th of July, 1952. And in her obituary, 
they they mentioned that she had many good stories, including one where she was being chased by redcaps after putting her boot through a glass door. Um, but she managed to escape, so that's good. You know, you could probably just kick. You could probably just kick him, right? Like, you, you could. You could probably just kick it. You just need a slightly longer stick than their stick. I mean, that's that's really all you need. Maybe like take a club and just like smack him a few times, like like a no no can, <laughs> right? Like uh-huh. get, a, get a no no can and just shake it a little bit. Oh, I didn't mention. I... I didn't mention they have a third weakness, red caps. It's a it's a jar of pennies, a Folgers can filled with nickels. So I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that red caps are just cats, right? Right, goth cats. Oh, They're you're goth right. Cats. Yeah, no, you're hundred percent right. Okay, I mean, so then the no no can would have probably worked. A no no can would have a hundred percent worked, or a squirt bottle. Yeah, I got I got my squirt bottle because the cats have been assholes lately. <laughs> are my cats red caps? Your cats are red caps. So pop culture. Uh, red caps are referenced in modern pop culture. References to them can be found in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling, as well as the Dresden Files, uh, the novel Cold Days by Jim Butch, the show Supernatural, and Magic the Gathering has a red cap card. Cryptid Watch! Cryptid Watch. Cryptid Watch. Watch. Cryptid Watch. All right. I just sent you a link. All right. It's to a video. This video was published to Disclose.tv, originally taken from LiveLeak. And uh, just watch it and tell me what you think it is. I know what it is. I have the feeling I'm going to know what it is. All right, well, I just looked at the uh, the image for this particular video. Uh-huh. That looks like... This, before we get oh, too far into boy. it. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. So yep. that was found okay. at the bottom of a lake in China, and they are looking at... A unknown, undiscovered creature. It's not an unknown or undiscovered creature. No, it looks an awful no. lot like a gentleman's flashlight. It does look an awful lot like a gentleman's flashlight. Now, I think like, this is a common happenance. Um, and I think this is just what they look like after sitting at the bottom of a lake for a long time. But I did find another uh, video where someone found a new species of mushroom in China. I saw that one. You saw I that? Saw, I- I've seen that one. Um, yes, yes. There, there seems to be an epidemic of this particular cryptid. Yes. Um, my suspicion is that it's teenage boys <laughs> trying to dispose of something. <laughs> I, I think, I think it occurs when a teenage boy has access to something and um, a particular thing or a particular activity, and then they try to dispose of it, and it gets found, and their response is, I, I don't. I don't know what that was. Where's my Xbox controller? <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, it must be It must be a new species of mushroom. Yeah, a new species of mushroom. <laughs> Not a... Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I have. So I'll go into that. That's the... all you got for this episode? Uh, I think that's going to do it for our inaugural episode of Cryptopedia. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at CryptopediaCast. We also have a Twitter, but eh, we're still not quite big on that. If you want to get in contact with us, you can check out our website, CryptopediaCast.com, and that has some contact information. If you could leave us a review on iTunes, that'll definitely help get us a little bit more notoriety, so to speak. Give us a little bit of a boost. I don't remember what my Instagram tag is right now. Mew2057. Uh, but... I'm sure that by the time that this gets released, it'll be on our website. So if you want to follow me, I, you know, I mainly just post cat pictures, but hey, it's what I do. Uh, and I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, you got anything, Brandon? You can follow me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And our art is done by Tom Hill. He's on Instagram at thomas michael hill his website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill.com until next time uh i'm john i'm brandon and uh things are gonna get weird
Um, so, all right, so, so I do have one other thing I want to share with you. I, I wanted yeah. to show it to you earlier, but I couldn't because I was afraid it would give away what the topic would uh, end yeah. up being. And I'm trying to figure out how to get back to the thing where I send you a, a mess, like a, a text. So it's on the uh, – if you mouse over the bar and ah, click there the go. little thing, it'll – So it's long. I skipped. I sent you a link for ex- the exact moment that I wanted you to see. This is dash okay. cam footage. Okay. A hundred percent real. Uh, you sent it to me. Yep. In uh, I don't via s- oh, there it is. <laughs> God damn it! I could not find any red cap videos, but I did find this. A garden gnome attack. What? This is definitely not real. This is definitely like a joke. Oh, God. It's the fakest thing ever. (laughs) It looks looks like uh, a, a... I mean, it's definitely not a high school student's project, right? Because it's a little bit too involved. There's three animated gnomes on the screen. But it does look like someone who didn't have access to any kind of rendering software that's real or modern. Oh, yeah. Like, they composited something, but then forgot to do all the stuff in post to make it look good. Yeah, it's basically what it looks like. Um, okay. So, let's. I guess let's do our, our post 